welcome to the presentation. Today I will talk about MEV capture through time advantage arbitrage. So this is the title of the paper that we wrote together with Ed Felton, Robin Frisch, Maria Silva, and Benjamin Lifshitz. And this is different from the title in the, of the session. So take your time to take a picture or write it down. because It will be gone, I cannot go really back. So initially I submitted it as a 20 minute uh, presentation, but it was demoted to five minutes. So the only thing I can do is to motivate you to read the paper. And I hope I can do that. Okay, so main part, motivation. So we try to understand what time boost does to MEV and to give you a very quick introduction in the time boost, this is a selling fast lane license that allows one player to have 200 millisecond advantage over all other players. And this advantage lasts only for one minute. And after one minute, there will be another auction. Then advantages, of course, assume, uh, achieved by delaying all the other transactions by other users. And we want to understand the arbitrage uh, between automated market makers and uh, outside markets. So we have a lot of assumptions in order to derive our few theor theoretical results and uh, many simulation results. So we assume that the, uh, in the outside markets, uh, fees are very low, or let's say zero, and the uh, price discovery happens on the external market. On the IMM, that is on the chain, it's only arbitrage transactions. Of course, there are some noise transactions as well, but we assume that they can go into, into both directions, so they cancel the effects. We also assume the uh, efficient market assumption, which is that the price depends only on the current, pr so pr price change doesn't depend on the previous price changes. So it's a pure random process, which is uh, of course not true in reality. And we even observed on the data that it's not true. Uh, so th the model looks like this. We have this one player that has this time advantage during time T. There are two assets, one risky asset and the numeraire. Think of as ether, risky asset and numeraire USD or the other way around. The AMM has a trading fee and the uh, risky assets price changes on the outside market. So initially we assume, initially of the simulation, we assume that they are the same, the prices are the same. And then once the arbitrage opportunity arises on the outside market, so price moves, then arbitrage needs to decide when to capitalize on it. And we assume that it has only time, advantage time. So after this time passes, uh, opportunity will be taken away by other arbitragers. And this is a conservative assumption for the uh, arbitrage value. So this reduces to an optimization problem. So we have uh, time advantage arbitrager and we have three parameters that uh, give a state. What is the current price difference, relative time, uh, so price difference, how much time passed in this 200 millisecond, and how much time passed in the total period time. And we need to decide between trading, so taking the arbitrage or waiting. And the punchline here is that dynamic programming solves this problem. And we then dynamic programming we simulated on the real data. So we took, uh, let's say, Ethereum, USD, T market on the Binance, and we emphasize 10 milliseconds. We have advantage window 200 milliseconds, and total time one minute. And we can calculate for each point, internal point, uh, uh, we can calculate what is the optimal move and also what is the uh, uh, average gains, average arbitrage value. And we obtained the observation that waiting till the end of this uh, uh, advantage time is mostly optimal, but not always. So there are some cases when it's not optimal. So I will not give you any numbers uh, because that's the only thing that people remember in the end, how much uh, money time boost makes with these assumptions. But it gives some upper bound on this type of arbitrage, so centralized exchange, decentralized exchange arbitrage. Uh, uh, additionally to this, we also looked into opportunity to let the pool contract know about time boosted transactions, which allows them to price such transactions differently. And this 
introduces some interesting game between LPs and the time advantaged arbitrager, and then we can calculate what will be the distribution of value between these two and other arbitragers. So thank you for your attention. Happy to answer questions about this and the time boost in general. Thank you very much. So raise your hand if you have any question. Yep, over there, uh, there first. Oops, sorry. A bit too far. <laughs> sorry. Do you think it's a good idea to use one minute uh, allocations to arbitrageurs? Is it too long? Have you tried to do shorter simulation times? I asked for, because MEV, multi-block MEV has been a problem. Uh, we understand it very well. So have you tried to simulate shorter? So we, in simulation, of course, you can simulate and get results, what you get. But um, we thought that one minute is not very long because um, if you make it, uh, yeah, if you make it longer, it's even worse from your perspective. But if you make it uh, short, then we need to conduct this auction too frequently. And that also has some cost. So that was yeah, the, the, this kind of trade-off that we analyzed. Yep. There's another question over there. Uh, did you try this using real money? And uh, uh, did you find anything interesting between real and uh, simulation? So we didn't try real money, but you are welcome to try. Uh, we analyzed the back testing, so this was data was taken in July. But in principle, you can forward test that too, once, once it's there. But you can also forward without time boost deployed on Arbitrum. You can just assume that you have this advantage and you can then see how much you can make with the strategies that we suggest. So answer is it's very easy to do, yeah. but we didn't do it. Yeah. Hi, um, this is Kenneth, and I'm not sure you covered it, but uh, was any differential gas uh, price that uh, was taken into consideration in your simulation? So what differential I didn't get? Uh, gas, like the amount of gas fees that you have for decentralized exchange. Decentralization. Yeah, the gas fees. Ah, uh -huh. so gas fees we assume to be, um, let's say, sub cent for, for the exchange. So, so we took realistic yeah. gas fees and subtracted from the gains, but they are very not substantial for the, for the results. I see. Thank you. Uh, there's one last question over there. Oh, over Sorry. there. Okay. Sure. Oh, over there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of inventory are, is needed to actually pull this off in a relatively profitable manner? I mean, you need to have uh, both assets on the chain and on the external uh, exchange to re like try this strategy. Yeah, but I guess I'm just looking from, like a t like from a volume perspective of what they actually need, like in your simulations, was there a drop-off point where, let's say, if they only had 100K versus 500K, it's no longer profitable? Yeah, actually, sometimes you need very large inventory to realize very large price difference. But we didn't go into this. We assume that you always have enough. But you are right that to take this um, advantage, you can check numbers. To take very large advantage, you need very large inventory as well. So that was the last question. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, please give a nice round of applause.